Good day, one what fly squad. Welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Bangkok Suvarnabhum Airport, and today I'm flying Gulf Air um, 787 to Bahrain. Uh, Check-in is at ILP. I'm near ILC at the moment, so let's take a walk to ILP. The crowds have come back to Bangkok Airport. As of the 1st of May 2022, travellers will no longer have to do a pre-departure test or an arrival test for entry into Thailand. Here's the check-in for Gulf Air. I don't know why, but there's no priority lane here. Everybody, regardless of your status or class, is funneled into one queue. So I just checked in, got my boarding pass really quick because Bahrain doesn't have any COVID entry restrictions at all. So it was like pre-COVID. Just drop your bags, give them your passport. They're going to ask whether you've got any uh, batteries or power banks in your suitcase. Then off you go, you get your boarding pass. And remember, you have to wear a mask still. Mm -hmm. So I just passed immigration and security uh, through the priority entrance. There was absolutely nobody, just two passengers, including myself. The whole process, including taking off your shoes, took two to three minutes. And now I'm in the air side, going to do some shopping for my friends back in Australia. Bangkok's of the boom is definitely a shopping paradise. Duty free, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Prada, Chanel, you name it, they have it. For frequent flyers and premium passengers, there's also plenty of great lounges here. Some are still closed due to COVID, but for One World alone, there's Cathay Pacific, Japan Airlines and Qatar. Star Alliance, they've got Singapore Airlines, Thai Airways and Turkish. For Sky Team, there's a China Airlines and a KLM slash Air France lounge. Some non-Alliance airline lounges as well, including Oman Air and Emirates. So Gulf Air doesn't have their own lounge here, nor do they use an airline lounge. Instead, they use the Miracle Lounge, which is like a plaza premium. So there's a couple of um, Miracle Lounges here at Suvarnabhum Airport. It's their major non-airline lounge here. Um, but it's a bit annoying how most of them are closed and at check-in they didn't really tell me which one to use so I just went to the one near the sea gate where my flight is going to depart from that one is closed so I went to the information desk to ask for direction to go to the D gate area where it's actually open and should be another five minutes walk so this is quite fascinating so behind me is the new walkway that brings you to the satellite building that is not yet open i think bangkok airport always reminds me of home because it's like hong kong chelap kok it's only got one big terminal but now they've built this new satellite building that's maybe a kilometer away looks like dubai as well just a long chunk of gates So we're finally in a lounge. So this Miracle Lounge is quite a boutique little lounge. The decoration looks nice and it feels comfortable. The furniture looks really nice and clean as well. It kind of reminds me of the Cathay Pacific The Bridge in Hong Kong, which is now unfortunately closed for good. The lounge was designed to make people feel like they're at home. Um, first things first, let's do a shower room tour. I sweat a lot on the way here, so I am gonna take a shower first. So there's a wooden table for you to put your belongings, a slipper for your convenience, a laundry basket, I don't know why they need that there. This is a men's bathroom, so there's a urinal. You've got charging outlets there, but it's not universal. You've got your face and hand towels and your other toiletries like lotion, hair comb and toothbrush. Moving on to the shower, it's really spacious and I really like the marble floor and wall they've got. Conveniently, they've got a towel rack there. You can leave your towel there. So after shower, you can just grab your towel from the rack without needing to step outside and making the floor wet and messy. So I really like the little touches here, like the flowers, the marble table, the floor, and a pair of slippers as well. But do note that any non-disposable items are not for you to take home. There's a price list on the wall. If I were to give any feedback to the lounge, is probably they need a mat 
the marble floor and water can be very dangerous. So here we are at the dining room. A lot of people, because not all the lounges are open, so a lot of people got put into this lounge. There are a lot of Australians here at the moment because the Qantas flight to Sydney got delayed by 5 hours. There are some western food options in the buffet and plenty of great Asian food options. My favourite is probably this Thai green curry. Orange juice in Thailand looks super orange. And I have my soda water ready as well because I know the curry is going to be very spicy for me. There's also a food station here and they make three dishes here including this Hainan chicken rice. Thank you. It looks super good. The portion is tiny but you can always go back and get more. <coughs> that guy sitting next to me wouldn't stop coughing, oh my god. And he's not even wearing a mask. Star Alliance gang here. Before long it's time to head to our gate for our Gulf Air flight to Bahrain. Gulf Air was founded in 1950, so the airline is now 72 years old. Our aircraft is still wearing the 70th year anniversary livery. So our aircraft today is a four-year-old Gulf Air Boeing 7879 Alpha 9 Charlie Foxtrot Alpha. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Okay, thank you. 4A, please. Right in the... Yeah. Thank you. They will assist you also. Yeah. Just here? Okay, thank you. <laughs> As I was approaching my seat 4A, the cabin manager ran down the aisle to point me the seat 4A. So here's my seat today, 4 Alpha, a window seat. Despite the 222 configuration, I was still given direct aisle access. Masks are no longer mandatory on board Gulf Air and in Bahrain at all. So if you want to take off your mask at this time, you're certainly most welcome to do so. So for welcome drinks, I opted for a glass of champagne. Welcome drink was followed by a bottle of water. Of course, yeah. Uh, after takeoff, we will start with some drinks. What yeah. you would like to have? Oh, we have garden salad or salmon roll. What's the last one, sorry? Salmon roll. Is that a Middle Eastern? Uh, it's food? not Middle Eastern. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Salmon, the fish. Oh, salmon. Yes, yes please, salmon. <laughs> yes. All right, for main course, yeah. we do have some chicken curry with rice. We also have some prawn with rice. Or uh, beef, filet steak mignon. Beef, please. Yeah, with mashed potatoes. Awesome. Would you like a glass of red wine? Yeah. Hello. Uh, cold, please. Cold. Thank you. So you can choose between hot and cold towels. Thank you. So here's the Gulf Air amenity kit. It looks pretty cute. Horse is one of my favourite animals, so I like this. So after welcome drinks and a bottle of water, we get Arabic coffee and a date. Gulf Air promotes themselves as a boutique airline and I think at this stage they've delivered it. My first time having an Arabic coffee, it's pretty good. I recently flew Singapore Airlines A350 Premium Economy Class from Bangkok to Singapore. If you're interested in watching the trip report, I'll have the link in the description down below.
So I'm going to go through the seat features with you after takeoff, but I just want to show you the major difference between window and aisle perhaps. So window obviously you'll have to walk through this aisle thing, walkway thing, whereas aisle seats you just have to sit down really. On the aisle side you have easier access to your beautiful coat hook and also your ottoman is closer to you so your leg room isn't as enormous as the one on the window side. Undisturbed, fasten your seatbelt over your blanket or clothing. You may now use your electronic devices in flight mode. Be careful when opening the overhead lock. So now I'm going to show you the seat features at my seat 4A. So your coat hook is on the walkway to the aisle, so not exactly very accessible. The TV is big and touch screen, but it's quite far to reach. You're going to want to use your TV remote. Here's the ottoman. It's quite difficult to rest your feet up there because it's quite far away until you've reclined your seat. And you can do so by pressing the buttons here. There's also a massage function. On the other side, you have buttons for your reading lights and a divider between the aisle and the window seats. Storage-wise, there's a place there for you to put some items and next to your bum, a bit more space. Also in there, you can find your noise cancelling headphone. Besides your headphone, you can find three USB ports and a universal power socket. You can find your tray table here, just push it downwards a bit and then it'll pop out. You can move it backwards, closer to you, and importantly it's really clean and smooth. To lift up the seat divider, simply press that button. It gives you the ultimate privacy if you're sitting by the window sign. And I'm so glad today I've got no neighbour, otherwise it's so awkward they can see everything that you're doing. Your TV remote is right next to your tray table. When you activate it, you'll need to watch a two minutes ad. It's not skippable, but it's only one off. There's a total of 155 movies to choose from, including a lot of international films. You'll find a reading light right next to you.
I really like how the business class seats are full of those brown leather and gold touches. It really does remind you that you're flying on a carrier whose country is oil rich. According to Wikipedia, Gulf Air has not made a profit since 2011. So here's the content in your amenity kit including mouthwash, a pair of socks, lotion, lip balm, toothpaste and toothbrush, earplugs, and a crew also gave up PJs and slippers. So the crew started the dinner service with a drink, I got an English tea with a biscuit that's got a date in it. I didn't expect that until I had a bite. Our cabin crew are now beginning the meal service finally. So here's my starter, I got the salmon roll option. A crew later also came with a basket of bread and I got a uh, garlic bread. You've also got butter, pepper and salt. For the salmon roll you've got two of them, it's cold and fresh. You've also got avocado slices, lettuce, capsicum and cherry tomatoes. For drinks I opted for a steel water and a glass of red. The salmon roll is really really good, I wish we got more than two. The garlic bread tastes good, it's crunchy and full of garlic, but it's a bit tough. I forgot exactly what red wine this was, it was good but not really my type. Now this is the best part of the meal service, our steak is here. The cow is drowning in the juice. So I'm going to show you the steak properly by moving the mushroom sauce away. This one looks almost well done. It's surprisingly tender and juicy. So this dish, I would give it a 10 out of 10. The vegetables were really good as well with the sauce. The steak, easily the best one I've ever had on the plane. If I could give a little bit of feedback, I would prefer having the sauce separately. So along with the cutlery, they give you a tooth floss if you need it. Now it's time for dessert. You have selections of cheese platter and a few different cakes. I went with this chocolate cake. I would have preferred it if they had ice cream to go with it, but this was pretty good as well. So instead of ice cream, they give you vanilla sauce on the side. And to end the meal service completely, I'm going to have an English tea again. Overall, that was a great dinner on board Gulf Air. So far, so good. Hello, welcome to Gulf Air 787 nine business class lavatory behind the cockpit pretty nice here with mood lighting and it's mad they tell to do 60 seconds here of um, hand washing imagine the queue in economy so you have hand cream and cups there if you want to brush your teeth that's handy the toilet itself this bathroom is actually really spacious especially for today's standard and wow, two got hooks. The toilet also got the bidet function to wash your bum. So I've just asked the crew if they've got any blanket. Unfortunately, they don't have it on the flight from Bangkok because apparently uh, the Bangkok team don't wash it for them. So yeah, from Bangkok to Bahrain, you don't get blankets, but Thankfully the plane's actually really warm. I'm low-key sweating after drinking my hot tea, so I should be alright and I'll fall asleep easily. Now let's have the divider up and I'll show you how great that privacy is. So really, once you have that divider up, your neighbour or the cabin crew walking by the aisle can't see you unless they walk down that walkway to peek over you. It's like a little cocoon here. The only time the cabin crew might have to peek over you is when there's turbulence and they need to check that you've got your seatbelt on. I'm back in the lavatory and see what somebody's done. 
That is disgusting. Maybe don't use the lotion next time. Just use some wet wipes. So you can illuminate your storage compartment so you can have easy access to your charging outlets. This isn't exactly a red eye flight. We left Bangkok at 4 p.m. and we're landing at 8 p.m. Bahrain time, so most people aren't sleeping, just watching a film. There's Wi Fi on this plane, but internet access is not free. Only three people are using it on board. There's only two plans the cheapest one is $10, and the most expensive one is $15. In less than three hours, the cabin crew came back to the aisle to begin the prior landing meal. So even though this is a lighter meal, everything doesn't come on a tray. The crew still put a cloth nicely on your table. So there's a lot of selection and you can choose what you want one by one. So I chose a prawn cocktail, a caviar and cheese and a fish pancake. The fish pancake is really good, tastes very Thai. This is probably my favourite of the three, the prawn cocktail. You've got three prawns, so very generous amount and very juicy. I'm so excited, never had caviar in my life before. Not exactly my thing, I guess I need to try more in the future. You can never go wrong with tea. So we're soon going to land into Bahrain, so let's quickly conclude my first flight ever with Gulf Air right here, right now. So the Gulf Air check-in at Bangkok Airport seemed a bit disorganised, there was no priority lane, and the staff never really told me which lounge to use. With the business class boarding pass, we can use the priority security and immigration, that was super quick. And then I went to the duty free, did some shopping, and then into the Miracle Lounge. The Miracle Lounge in Concourse D was quite nice, very boutique and it matches the Gulf Air brand. Excellent food selection, a very nice shower suite, but a bit too busy. Once I stepped on board the 787, I received a very warm welcome from our cabin manager today. I was delighted by the cleanliness of my seat area, there was no fingerprints, all surfaces were clean, the windows and carpet included. A few minutes went past and then we got champagne, a cold towel, a bottle of water, a mini kit, PJs and slippers, Arabic coffee and a date. That really was a lot of things but in a very good way. Now I want to talk about the meal service. The first meal was absolutely fantastic. Best steak I've ever had on a plane but for some people it could be a little bit too salty. I'm the kind of person who would ask for extra salt for my chips and McDonald's and the saltiness of my steak was just perfect for me so I'm sure it's quite salty for a lot of people. The starter was good, I liked that salmon roll. For dessert I got the chocolate cake. It was delicious but it wasn't like amazing. Now I want to talk about the seat. My seat was really comfortable, it was super long. I had a good sleep despite missing a blanket. With a blanket problem, Golf Air really needs to fix that ASAP. It simply wasn't good enough. The seat privacy on the window side was simply amazing. Announcements were kept to a minimal for this night flight and I like how the prior landing meal starts at 75 minutes before landing. Some airlines do it like two hours, which is ridiculously early. So the way that Gulf Air schedules the meal services maximizes our rest during the flight. The second meal was a light refreshment and it was, again, quite boutique and delicious food. Finally, I want to mention about the cool touches again, like the rose water on your hands before landing, the Arabic coffee and date before takeoff. Also just the golden brown touches surrounding your seat. It really does feel like a boutique and luxurious flight. So overall, a very pleasant flight with Gulf Air. The only thing missing was the blanket. 
So if you were to fly business class on Gulf Air from Bangkok to Bahrain, you're looking to pay about 33,300 Thai baht. So that's it for the conclusion today. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this Gulf Air trip report, a first one from me. Please, if you're new to my channel, subscribe and click that bell button. So every time when I upload, you'll get notified right away. I upload a new trip report like this every Thursday, 12 p.m. Hong Kong time. That's 11 a.m. in Bangkok, 7 in the morning in Bahrain. And I also do hotel videos every Monday. You can also keep up to date with me on my social media platforms, Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook. If you want to support my channel financially directly, you can do so on PayPal me, Patreon, and with YouTube directly by joining my membership. Thanks again for watching, now enjoy the approach and landing into Bahrain and after that I will show you a vlog of Bahrain. Enjoy!
Good morning. Um, can I have breakfast to my room, please? Yes, that's correct. Hello. Can you come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off.